Hi, I'm here with a friend of Casey's who can tell us what happened with Casey two weeks ago where she believes that she was actually walking along the avenue with this strangler. Can you tell us what you just told us a few minutes ago? Okay, um, about two weeks ago, um, a guy identical to the guy in the picture um, was sitting here at the L stop and he approached me and asked me if I could do a date with him for like $20, like to dip off somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I told him that um, I wasn't sure at first. And then I told him, yeah, so when I was walking with him, my friend Casey, the girl who got actually got murdered by him yesterday, was standing down on Sergeant and Kensington. So when I walked by her, I told her to call 911. So she ran across to the pharmacy down the street, and they told her uh, that they weren't going to let her use the phone to call 911 because I shouldn't be walking with him. Well, she said, well, she's not walking with him for that reason. She's walking with him because she wants to try to get 911 and keep him, keep him around until the cops came. Well, they still said no. So she goes across to the beer distributor and they said no. So she went to a family that was standing outside on Sergeant Street right before um, Jasper and they asked to call 911. And they were like, well, where are they at? Instead of letting her call 911 discreetly, they chased after me and what I believe was this guy. And when they started running after us, he took off. So then after that, um, we don't know where he went. I saw a cop then that was on Cumberland and Kensington, and I went up to him and I said, I just, I just saw the guy that was on the poster. I was like, 99% was sure it was him. And the cop was like, well, um, I'll check around the area. So that was- Do you know exactly what time that was around? Um, well, the stores were still open and it was dark, so it was probably around six. Really? That early? Yeah. Do you haven't seen them since then? No. Do you feel like the businesses around here are kind of pushing you away, that they're not trying to help you right now? Um, I think that their attitudes in the community is that what happens to us, like um, addicts or prostitutes, is on us. You know, they like whatever happens to us, like kind of we like deserve it. It seems like to be their attitude, and um, instead of them seeing that this the, the killer is only targeting prostitutes at the time now, they don't see that maybe a lot later on in the future it could be their daughter sure. or their sister, and it might not be an addict. It, he might move on and you know hurt someone else and hurt somebody else. Is there anything else you could tell us about him? Like, what was his persona what did what was he trying to do with you what like not like that but like what was, where did he want you to go did he have a car no he was on he was um, on foot but the only reason why I knew for sure it was him is look just just like him with the mall and he even had the um, iPod one too did he have a specific accent um not really he really didn't say much you no know? he just asked and um he, he was kind of like, like persistent when I kept saying like, you know, can we can go into a friend's house. I get with my friend because I go inside. I, don't, I won't, I will never do anything outside, you know. Right. And he was like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry even just to off somewhere, you know. Like, once, once somebody, um, you try to get them to go inside and they want to do something outside. You get suspicious. It's, it's a little suspicious that, you know, that they're up to something shady. Cause, right. You know, that they know that somebody that you know or somebody that cares about us is going to be around that they're not going to be able to do anything threatening to us. So. Well, I hope you stay safe out here. In no way do we believe that anybody deserves it because their lifestyle choice and I hope to God that you don't run into him. But if you do, I would suggest you run up and down the avenue screaming rather than go into one of these businesses, even if they are open, or look for one of these guys because they're pretty much out here all the time. And I wish you well. All right. Take care. Go. Um, Ray Garcia. Ray, how you doing? What are you doing out here tonight? Out right here looking for this scumbag right here. Yeah? Because I got little sisters that walk to school and stuff. They be out here at night because they work and stuff. So you know, I don't want them in the streets because, you know what I'm saying? Like, how long have you been wandering the area looking for him? For like an hour and a half right now. We've been, we done walked up and down Kensington around where he had caught his victims and stuff. So we're just hoping that we catch him or get him out the street. Have you heard any news about any sightings or... 
the last time he caught someone, like his last album. victim was right there on Tusculum, front in Tusculum. Right. right. Yeah, right. That was right across the street from my house. So that's what got me out here looking for him because if it was right there so close to my house, I imagine my sisters and I'm out there. And wh why are you out here tonight? Same reason. Like, I don't want, if anything happens to my little sisters because of this guy, it's going to piss me off. So I'm just looking for this guy. Just destroy this kid. That's that's really admirable of you guys to do this for the citizens of Kensington. And being you have sisters, do you that, have a sister? I, I got I got three sisters, and I also got a friend that works. I mean, she works at a store up there on Kensington, and she told me she see him and he looks in the store and everything, so she knows who he is. He he be on Kensington, and I told her that I, I'm gonna walk up. We are gonna look for him. Like right now, we we had planned this since about Thursday. We planned it about Thursday. I told them, look, on Friday after school. We drop off our book bags and we just go around looking for them. We catch him, we call the cops, and that's what we're gonna do. Because we got, we got, I mean, I know I got a mom and I got a little sister, and if I get him off the street, that's the better for me. Do you feel obligated to find him? I feel like it, it, I don't think right like it's in my do. right. I just feel like it's a good thing to do because a lot of females is getting harmed. So you just feel compelled to help yes. all the women around here. Yes. That's that's amazing. So you, you already know that the women that you know are aware of them. We've heard tonight that a lot of women around this area have not heard about this. They're not watching the news. They're not listening. I, I don't know if they've seen the flyers or whatever, or just ignoring the situation. Them, are you guys. really trying to put the word out there? And yeah, because just... you got to watch it. Anything anything can be said to, to reel a girl in. Like, I don't know how, but he recently, they said he recently got a girl in the alleyway. I don't know how you do that. Right. But you got to watch it because he's recently, he, he can do anything to try to reel you in. And I, I, I told my sister since they was young, stick to yourself and don't, and anytime you see something fishy like that, you run as fast as you can. We have heard some stories where women were approached by other men that are kind of doing the same thing that you, yeah, you're yeah. doing tonight, and they were in fear of that person also. So I think people are getting a little bit. I feel like if we get him off the street, the better. The, yeah. the quicker you find them, the better. Well, I really appreciate you guys what you are doing. I think it's really great. And just stay safe yourself. Hi, Melvin, can you tell us about the three murder victims that you knew? Nicole was the first one, and I knew Nicole, and I couldn't believe because she used to live with a friend of mine, Frank, and um, she disappeared, and I found out, you know, heard about her, mm -hmm. and then uh, Elena, she was in recovery for a long time, and when I seen her down here, she said she was going to see a friend of somebody, and the next day I hear about her on a lot on uh, Blue Street. And uh, KC, I talked to her two weeks ago, and I said, damn, KC, I said, this dude's going back home, because she said she lived in the Coconut. I said, you should, oh, you ought to go back home. She said, I am. And um, then I told me I don't see her for a week. And somebody said, yeah, what happened to KC? Ain't nobody seen her. I said, I hope didn't nothing happen to her for real, you know. Now what's going on, you know, found out the day that she was the one up on Tuscan. Do you think she was aware of this guy being she in the well area? Because she, we, and I told her, I said, you know, you need to stop taking them walking dates because taking them walking dates is going to get you something you don't want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's really hurt, the fact that I told her that and then turned out and found out the day that she was the one on Tuscan Street. So you think she went willingly? All of them went willingly. I don't know what he's saying to them or whatever. But all of them went willing. Even though she seen the flyers and knew the description? That, that, that tells me that the flyers aren't what he flyers. looks like. Exactly. They're not that's not him. It can't be him. Even though they showed that, that so called film uh, him on TV that they had his back or whatever, you know, they showed a picture of him, you know, whatever that, so you know most of the girls in the area. What are what are the girls saying at this point? What are they telling you? Are they really afraid, or are they just, yeah, they really don't afraid, take it that they serious? Doing, they're afraid, but they're doing what they got to do, because they're out here. Right. Simple as that. Because ain't nobody going to give them nothing. So they're getting it the best way they know how, which is the oldest profession in the world. Right. You know, it's still you know, a messed up thing. But, which, uh, obviously, you know, they take a chance, hey. but hopefully we get the word out you know what he looks like in in more detail so that they can be more aware we had a girl earlier that you may have known that she said that she was actually walking with him and Casey one night so 
There may must have been. I'm not sure, but obviously they're aware, right? You feel that everybody in the area is everybody, aware? Yeah, they're aware. I mean, they're not retarded. Of course they're aware, but they're doing what they got to do. They're taking walking dates because they said that he was driving a white van one time, and now they say he's riding scepter. Hey, so who's going to take a walking date? Right. All walk right. to death. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Just hope you catch it. Hi, I'm here with Mike, and he's one of the gentlemen that come out here every single night to try to find this strangler and protect the women that walk up and down the area or get off the L stop here. What, do you, what can you tell us, Mike, about coming out here every night? What's it been like for you? It's, it's, it's been great for the simple fact that, you know, I'm out here and I'm out here with CB Kimmers and Greg. We're out here to make a difference. You know what I mean? You need this presence out here to let this person know that what you're doing is wrong and you're going to be caught. You know, and the thing about it is we're here bringing awareness to people that are riding by and the people in the neighborhood to let them know that we have to come together, you know what I mean, so we can stop this. You know, because this is senseless. But you, you know. work all day, a full-time job. Yes, I And do. then you come here every single night in the bitter, freezing cold. Yes. What drives you? First and foremost, this is a city of brotherly love, okay? And, and this is about love. This is about giving back. I mean, when, when something happens in the city of Philadelphia, we come together as a family. You take it personal. It, yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. So something like this has to stop, you know what I mean? Because it, it could happen to anybody. You know, and, and it's been going on too long. And we're just here to let this person know that sooner or later, we're going to catch you. What you type I mean? of feedback do you get from the locals here? The locals are glad to see us. You know what I mean? And, and, and the thing about it is, it lets them know they're not alone. You know, the thing about it is, I don't care where you live at in Philadelphia, but when something happens, we all come together. That's true. You know, we rally. Yes. You know what I mean? So, it's, I mean, if it's, if it's about a local team or about something like this, we rally together. And That's we're going to be out here until, it, until, we, until we catch this person, you know, from sun up to sundown. You know, when I come out here, I'm re-energized. You know, it's like putting jumper cables to me. So I'm just, I'm glad to be a part of it and I'm glad to do whatever I have to do. And if I have to walk from sun up to sundown to get these flyers out so people can see what's going on so we can catch the person, I'll do what I have to do. Well, I just want to say thank you very thank much you. for thank doing you. a great job thank for you. our citizens. And I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. What's your opinion about what's going on? Yeah, I really need to catch this guy because he's doing bad things to people that is like they really have no thought to it. And like, it's not even called for him to do this. So like, y'all really need to catch him and do like put one. him uh, behind okay. bars because he's doing things to women's out there that does not have the fault to it or anything. You live around here? Yes, I live on, around here. And you walk around here by yourself? Yeah. Are you afraid? Yes, I'm afraid. What What do you do to try to make it safer for yourself? Like when I walk around, like I try to walk around with my friends, or Area when I'm on my way, mace. when I'm on my way to school, walk with my friends, mm -hmm. and so I get to school. Have you heard of any sightings of him? Huh? Have you heard of any sightings in the area? Yes, you have. I have. Yes. What have you heard? I heard of two. I heard they called him on Friday of two weeks ago. Really? And they said that wasn't him. And then I heard that they caught him again and the DNAs didn't match. But honestly, we already have to deal with the dangers of Philadelphia. And to have a serial killer, a serial rapist, we need to get rid of this guy. Right. You know, it, what do you think it's going to take to find him? More police out here. I mean, in civilian clothes. With gun, I'm telling you, catch this guy. Don't let me see him. Because if I do, it's like, I won't. I mean. Okay. Thank you. Kensington is caught in a joint war on terror. There have been four deaths already from this terrorist. How many more lives have to be sacrificed before this war ends? Truthfully, four lives is four too much already. Regardless of their choices in life, they do not deserve to be murdered. It just seems that the word Kensington is like a virus. Nobody wants it. I wonder if the same events happened in Rittenhouse Square or Great Northeast, would there have been a much quicker response? Our thoughts and prayers go out to the victims, family and friends.